So guys, we are in full force demolition mode! So guess what? Listen to me. It was supposed to be a video showing you guys how easy it is to remove tile from concrete. Scratch all up. Abort mission, abort mission. This is the best, quickest way that I found. And we are gonna show you right now. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Okay, maybe it wasn't so quick, but it sure was cheap. All right, so the first part, the first thing you have to do is break up these tiles using this four pound mallet. Do not try any, what do you guys call it here? I mean, I'm from the Bahamas, we call it a mallet as far as I know. What do you call it here? We, we call it a mall too sometimes, but whatever, moving right along. So don't use anything below four pounds. I tried, it does not work. It's just, this is like the perfect weight to get this job done. Just keep at it and believe me, it goes way faster than you think it does. In no time, we had most of the tiles up. After which all we did was scoop everything up, drop them in a bucket and put them on the back of my friend's truck. Don't forget to wear gloves and definitely wear safety goggles. Please wear safety goggles. These little shards fly all over the place. And this is his truck. It doesn't look like a lot, but it was a lot. So once you're done with the cracking of the tile and the removal of the ceramic, this is what's left, the thin set. The hardest, I'm telling you, this is the most difficult part of the job, moving that thin set. This is what you want it to look like when you're done, as close to this as possible. Proof is in the pudding, guys. See the little spirals? Woo so after breaking up the tile, you're going to use this bad boy. And the good thing about this um, jackhammer is it's able to get under the cupboard where the next tool can't reach so this is kind of an essential tool if you're gonna do this without using the big boy this is gonna remove most of the thin set but not all of it that thin set is something serious See, it's not that hard, relatively easy. The only thing is dust, shards, and that stupid cable. So you see, it does come up. I like to spray it with water. Maybe it doesn't work, maybe it does, but it makes me feel like it's coming up faster, I don't know. And I also hold it upside down too. For some reason, it's more comfortable for me that way. <laughs> and of course you have to sweep up all that dust that the jackhammer made drop it into a bucket or bag and take it outside and now we have the grind and listen oh my god if you don't listen to anything else I say use water sprinkle water on the floor you see that the minute it goes outside of the area where the water is you see the amount of dust that kicks up now dust is inevitable but at least by using some water you can reduce the amount of dust that's gonna be in the air which reminds me use a mask you know the same mask that they forced us to wear for the last few years and yes that water is gonna create mud Trust me, do not sweep it up until it is dry, or you will be pissed. Oh yeah, these are important too. Yeah, but this method really works to bring down that uh, thin set. Just remember to use a quality diamond grinding wheel. And I shall put the links in the description in case you guys want to pick them up. Won't be a problem. 
Full disclosure, yes, these are my affiliate links. So if you don't want to make me a few dollars, then just totally omit these links and search them on uh, Amazon. Hey, people, some people are weird. I don't want him to make no money. <laughs> oh, man. But as you can see, it definitely cuts down. I mean, I just wanted you guys to see in real time how this works without speeding up or any of the cheap stuff. So this is the amount of water I use. And as you can see, watch this, look at this. I'm just gonna break you down. But on a serious note, this really works well. I was pleasantly surprised. I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but. Make sure you have all windows, all doors open if you can, because it's a lot of dust. Even if you can put a fan by the door, that would help too. Turn on the exhaust fan on your stove. Whatever you can do to help, you do it. And the final step is to take away anything that the grinder couldn't get and get under the cabinets where the grinder could not fit. And you have this. Come on, look at that. Come on, look at that. This is a day of work, not even two days. Okay, so guys, I do not recommend spending 270 something odd dollars on this gigantic monstrosity unless you have it in your budget or you're not, you know, able to do that type of work. I don't know, for whatever medical reasons or timing or whatever. So what I do recommend is renting this bad boy. I mean, look at it. It's a fine piece of machinery. It's not that expensive. And don't forget to ask the workers about the bit that you're gonna be renting also with this tool. Actually, you can rent all of these tools and still be well under $100 if you're on a budget. Me personally, I would grab the four pound mallet from Amazon, I would buy the scraper from Amazon, and I would rent the jackhammer. So that's what I would do. So as far as angle grinders go, you have the Porter cable, which is $39, and you cannot, cannot, cannot go wrong with this. I'm sure it's gonna last you way past this particular project. Why am I using this axe? Because you're an idiot. Alrighty. So go ahead, save as much money as you can and get as much done as you can.